Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hello and welcome to Business Today. Viewers, it is important to understand every business, big or small, needs to hire an accountant to protect the financial integrity of your business, the integrity of your business, sorry. My, many business owners think with the assistance of a handy software such as QuickBooks, um, Xero, they can personally handle the accounting and the truth to be told, that is the biggest mistake a business owner can make. When business owners decides not to hire an accountant, they are usually motivated by the saving. They feel that the saving uh, they will achieve will be beneficial, but fact of the matter is, a good accountant can be one of the most worthwhile investment one can do for, uh, make for their business and can actually end up saving the company a lot of money. Hiring the right accountant can be a valuable asset to your business, <coughs> no matter how small, and can provide many benefits at various stages of growth. And with me in the studio, I have two wonderful guests who are in the business of accounting. So without further ado, I'll introduce my guest to you. Hello and welcome. Hello. Tim, would you like to uh, introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Tim, um, um, co-director of the Make Sense Accountancy Firm. Um, I started off in financial services and then I moved into international accountancy. Um, and then I met Tafal Rahman and uh, we started at uh, Make Sense Accountancy. Yeah. And um, we are, I also co-own BRN Tax and also BRN Accountancy as well with Mr. Rahman. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Mr. Tafal Rahman, welcome onto the show. Sorry, yeah. Okay, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, please? my name is Tafal Rahman. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm an accountant at uh, BRN Tax and BRN Accountants and Make Sense Accountants. Um, I'm originally from Southampton. I've uh, re relocated, I've set up businesses in Birmingham and uh, I, we have offices in London. Okay. Well, congratulations. Thank so you. you've got offices in London and um, Birmingham. Yes, we okay. have. Congratulations, that's good. Okay, um, with business today, okay, our idea is we want to motivate, um, help people, advise people in business, whether it's business or careers really. And one of the first questions I want to ask you is how does a person progress in the field? Um, what is the typical career path in your field? Uh, there, there's. Um, Two typical ways. One uh, would be a uh, student leaving school. They would uh, go into, uh, they would probably do a course called AAT, mm -hmm. which is apprenticeship. And the other one would be a graduate. So in our office, we have a AAT apprenticeship and we also have graduates. So if you've done, uh, if you've done university degree, then you would do a graduate role where you would then train as an ACCA accountant okay. or ACA accountant or if you haven't gone to university and you want to do the apprentice route, then you will do a qualification called AAT, and that leads into a um, career in accountancy. Okay, okay. And what are the skills that is most important for a position um, in this field, and the best way to enter into this occupation? The, the best way to enter, as I say, it could be uh, that if you just left school, you don't know what short to do, then you can, and you, you are thinking of going into accountancy, I think the best route would be to go and work for volunteer okay. and work for a, for a local firm of accountant and see if, if that is what you want to do. Okay. And uh, maybe uh, then if you go into a career, then may decide to do a course and make a career out of that. Or if you've done university uh, education, then maybe that is the course that you want to do or profession you want to go into. But uh, ideally, if you are starting out, uh, volunteering or uh, finding a permanent position would be a good one. Okay, no problem. Um, I'm just going to go into Tim, um, Mr. Tim Hammond. Can you tell us about your involvement in the business, or within the business with Mr. Tafai, I'll just say? Uh, my involvement with the business, um, with BRN Tax, I help out um, going and finding the new business. And then once we've uh, found um, a new business case, uh, someone who needs our help, uh, who's under investigation, by the tax office or the VAT office, I then get involved and look, in, look into the case uh, more deeply and then help out um, with uh, the, the tax investigation. Okay. With uh, Make Sense, uh, that's uh, the company that means oh, fail. Co own. Two different companies. Yes, they're two, they're two different companies. Okay. Uh, Make Sense is a cloud accountancy company. Um, with that, I'm director of sales. And then obviously, I'm going out, okay. finding a new business 
and then looking after them um, okay. once we've got them okay. on board. Um, I'm going to come back onto that actually. Yeah. I've got some interesting questions. <laughs> Could I ask you what's your involvement in your businesses? Um, I'm the director of, uh, of my company called BR and Tax and, and an accountancy firm. Uh, we um, we help the community who face problem with the, the tax office. Um, we use our experience and expertise to help the local people and people locally and nationally um, with the and also try to promote uh, the modern services which is the cloud accountancy which uh, Tim will talk about later where th there's a lot of changes happening in the business world mm -hmm. where I think the viewers may want to be uh, may want to know about which is the cloud accountancy side of the uh, um, HMRC are bringing a lot of uh, new rules out okay, they uh, are on there. They, yes <laughs> they are they are bringing a lot of uh, new rules out which uh, unfortunately people have to face mm -hmm. they can't avoid that <laughs> Okay. So you mentioned um, cloud base. Um, yeah. Is that a digital thing to the business? Is it? Yes. What, that's is, what is that? That's right. Um, well, there's cloud based uh, accountancy software, and then there's also HMRC's digitalisation projects. They're two totally separate things, uh, but the one can help the other out. HMRC's digital projects, they want everything going into the cloud, they want every business and every sole trader to have a digital tax account. Uh, by 2019 for sole traders really? and 2020 for incorporated companies. So all the businesses will have to do that? That is correct. Oh, right, they okay. will have okay, to do that. It's interesting. Yeah, 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 it's very interesting. Plus, uh, HMRC have pushed it back slightly by 12 months, but it is definitely happening. When they were first talking about it about three years ago, uh, they released a PDF which was 12 pages long. They've now got um, a document that's uh, available online, which is into the hundreds of pages at the moment. So it is definitely happening. Mm. HMRC have spent millions and millions on this project already. So it is happening. Um, and it's people, they can either get involved with it now and get their accounts into the cloud, or they can wait until the last minute. Um, and then, and then rush and yeah, make mistakes. Then rush so it's always good mistakes. to be there in yeah. advance and get used to yeah, it. Yeah, that's but right. What is it that someone needs to do? You know, but what, what, what you need to do um, at the moment is get involved in cloud, what's called cloud uh, accountancy software. Um, that's things like Xero um, and Free Agents. QuickBooks uh, as well. QuickBooks as well. Okay. Um, and, wh and what that means is basically instead of using spreadsheets or going to your accountant's off, uh, office, with carrier bags of uh, invoices, yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as you do. Um, instead of doing that, you're basically putting it into the cloud. Uh, so you're using Receipt Bank uh, on your phone. You literally you go into Receipt Bank uh, and get a receipt. Uh, you take a picture of it, and then that goes into the cloud. You no longer oh need wow. to keep that receipt. So if you're working for someone then obviously you're not losing the receipts, so you're able to claim all of your expenses back. But if you're a business owner, at the end of the year, you haven't got files and files of all these receipts. They're all already in the cloud. That automatically goes to your accountant. Is that the same for the sales as well? Or? Yeah, it's exactly the same for the sales. You can uh, <coughs> access it on an uh, iPad uh, or any computer, any device with internet access. And you literally go on there and you can invoice from there um, okay. and you can do your payroll on there for okay. small businesses. Well, submitting that, I mean, you're taking yeah. the taking snap, the, uh, snap taking uh, the, of the invoice. That's you right. have to do the same for your sales invoice as well. Yeah, for the sales invoice, you literally go on here, you click a button. Um, if you've already got your supplier's details in there, you select which supplier it is. You put in the amount, how much it's for, and you can click send, and then that automatically gets emailed. Gets filed into yeah, your accountant and gets out. So the it goes straight to the supplier um, and also it goes in your accounts as well. So there's two ways of looking at this. You can use uh, Xero um, for a small company. So you, you're, you would uh, access it. So mm -hmm. all of your accounting software is all in one place. Okay. Or if you're a one-man band, typically your accountant would do all the work on there and you would go on there and just view what your accountant's done. So it's either you've got all your accounting software in one place okay. that your accountant also has access to, to do year-end accounts and provide the... Uh, you, what you also need is you need the accountant's advice. Obviously. You can't just use this as a computer says yes. Yeah. And computer says no, like people use it for. Mm -hmm. You need proper accounting advice. Because a good accountant, although you'll pay them money, 
a good accountant should save you a lot more money than yeah. you pay them in their As fees. I and well, and yeah. there's a lot of cases that I've looked at recently mm -hmm. that yes, they are paying additional fees to me, but I've saved them more than that in tax mm -hmm. um, that, that they would have paid without my advice. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you yeah. very much. Um, there are, I'm going to ask Mr. Tufail now. There are many changes in all types of industries. Are there any changes in your industry? Well, the one um, Tim just mentioned here, which is the um, cloud accountancy, okay. uh, it benefits us, the accountants, where, mm -hmm. uh, although Tim explained here how the, how the software works, mm -hmm. or how the system works, but for accountants, for us, uh, and the business owners, the benefits that um, it, you can en it enables you to see the full picture of the business, you're able to see how much you have done, you're able to see how much VAT you have to pay, you don't have to wait around for three months for, for your accountant to tell you how much VAT you have to pay, you don't have to wait around for things, you can see who hasn't paid you, who's paid you, so it gives you the f bit more control of, of, uh, of your business. Mm -hmm. So if you're after more control, uh, rather than wait for the accountant to tell you, it is there. Okay. Which you have to do anyway, in a year and a yeah, half time anyway. That's so. true, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. And um, Tim, do you have any advice for new business, people who are getting into new businesses, so any new businesses? Uh, for new businesses, um, you've got HMRC's changes in a few years, uh, and one of those changes is going to be uh, that you're paying your tax quarterly uh, rather than annually. Um, and so my advice would be make sure you've got uh, enough reserves there. Plus it's also making sure um, that you've got everything in place. So using uh, cloud accountancy software, mm -hmm. um, a good accountant should be also be able to push you in the right direction of, say, um, a good solicitor and also a good uh, suppliers and things like that. So I do a lot of networking, and networking can be a very good uh, marketing tool I and also that. a ve very good way of uh, new businesses generating business plus also finding new suppliers and things like that yeah. because you'll get the benefit of not just going through the yellow pages of also going out there finding people who have actually used them yeah. so yeah that, that's, that's a very good thing yeah getting involved that's good. yeah that's right um do you have anything to add on to this for um, the businesses? i mean tim has said uh, mo mostly about the cloud accounting side of it um our community needs to understand that, um, that is, it is very important, especially the, the question was what's happening in the profession or the business world, yeah. and that's, that's a major change. Uh, you've got to ask your accountant if you have one, that what are the changes, and they've got to tell you what the changes are, because we see people coming to us where they haven't heard of it. Mm -hmm. So when you are here enough time that you have to submit your tax return four times a year rather than once a year, mm -hmm. That's a massive change, a massive shock to people. So that is a m major change in our profession, in, in, in our profession. And it's for digitalization, where HMRC are saying, or the big government are saying, you're able to do your banking on your phone, you're able to collect your prescription on the phone, why can't you pay us the tax on the time uh, through the phone? Okay. So that's the major, massive change that's happening. Okay, okay. Now, um, coming back to a bit of advice for us. Um, okay, if a taxman walks in on an ounce, mm. does a business have any rights? Um, do they have any rights or the taxman can just come in and carry on doing what they need to? Uh, they, they typically We've got three minutes, so mm. we can continue after the break. So Okay, yeah. Uh, typically they come in for two reasons. Uh, one would be a a compliance check where they think there's maybe a, some serious fraud going on or possibly uh, if, the, if, the, if, they've sus if they suspect that if they suspect that, that then um, they will come, come and visit you and they will pr provide you the notice okay. and they will say they, they will introduce themselves as, as the VAT officers or tax inspectors um, you will check their IDs if they actually are VAT officers. Sometimes we have seen or we've, we have heard where people have pretended to be HMS officers. Really? But, but they are not. Okay. So you check their IDs and you can always ask them, can we please check your IDs? You can phone HMS office, the number will be on the letter. And uh, if they are, they, then they are. Okay. So. Um, you have many rights as a, as a, as a business owner. So as a business, they have rights. They okay. have rights. Okay, okay. Their rights are, uh, if it's a busy time they walked in, you don't, have to, if you don't have to comply to them. You can always say to them, uh, please come later or please see us at the accountant's oh, office. Do that, okay. you, you can do that. Mm -hmm. and, um, and also, if it's not reasonable time where 
you are in the middle of something, you can always say no to them. So you don't have to say, yes, come on. Okay, because it's unannounced. It's right? unannounced. Mm -hmm. And the, 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 the only thing that would happen, potentially, okay. they could fine you for £300. Yeah. That's the worst that could happen. Okay, I'm going to stop you there. I'm going to come back and continue from there, if you don't Thank mind. You. Okay, viewers, we're just going to go to a short break, so stay tuned and see you after the break.